Kapawa. This is Kai Opua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation, bringing you another segment of Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. I hope you enjoy the beautiful background. We're on Maui for the 21st anniversary of uh, uh, Celebration of the Arts, and today we have with us uh, Rook Kapuniahi Parker. Uh, Rook, mahalo. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Mahalo. You're going to be doing uh, a, a lecture this afternoon, and you have uh, so art demonstration, the exhibit, sales going on inside, and we'll go inside and take a look at that. Your family, long time. Some of your subject has to do with his, his, history, Hawaiian yes. history and mm -hmm. so forth. And I know your dad was a big historian, yes. cultural resource. And so how did, you, how did you wind up being where you are today? I mean, clearly the background in, the, in your ohana uh -huh. contributed but I know some of your brothers probably didn't go the same way. Correct. And, and you chose to uh, follow this course because? Yeah, I've always enjoyed uh, historical uh, uh, interests as far as, especially in the Hawaiiana. I was very, very fortunate to grow up in a house that my father was a uh, Hawaiian historian. Also, mm -hmm. he had many other different interests. Right. Uh, he, he made um, plastic models. Uh, he, he, was, he used to paint on his spare time also. And so all of these different things uh, left a deep impression on me mm -hmm. as I was growing up watching him do his, do his craft. And mm -hmm. I really uh, enjoyed the art aspect especially because I was kind of a loner. Mm -hmm. I still am growing up. Yeah, well. I was just, and I, 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 I like the serenity of being alone and being able to create and draw. And, mm -hmm. and I, uh, my father was also very well read and he had a big library at home mm -hmm. compared to my other friends when I go to their house. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't see that. Right. And so, uh, as long as I put the book back where I got it, I, mm -hmm. could, I could use his references <laughs> too because yeah. that was a big deal. Sure. And I learned how to take care of you know, my dad's stuff. And yeah. so, his books became my other teachers and I, I learned to draw and, and uh, Hawaiian historical things. I, I was reading at a very early age, The Ruling Chiefs of Hawaii by Samuel mm -hmm. Kamakao. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the Bible of Hawaiian history books. Right. And so all these things left a deep impression on me. Uh, when any spare change I did have, um, odd jobs around uh, mowing people's lawns, mm -hmm. I used to buy a lot of comic books. Mm -hmm. uh, Conan was my favorite because of the fact that, you know, I'm, I was a guy and I, I, I liked that kind yeah. of, I learned yeah. how to draw anatomy by those comics. Right, right. And I continued to, to uh, try to get better, but unfortunately never really had a chance to go to uh, uh, formal art training mm -hmm. until just recently. I'm currently enrolled in Windward Community College mm -hmm. in an uh, um, oil painting class oh. taught by Norman Grafham. Right. Um, learning so much stuff. It's never too late to learn. Really. Did you work in oil before? Never did. It's kind of a different medium, I it guess. It is. Yeah. And so I what did you do? Pencil, pencil drawing? I did pencil and a color pen right. and marsh pens. Mm -hmm. Then I started with acrylics mm -hmm. and um, got to work quick with acrylics. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm, I'm with oils. Yeah. But uh, always uh, trying to better my, my trade. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's important. Uh, I need to do the best job I can in presenting those stories that are all inside me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, it's always not going to be about me. It's, it's about the stories that sure. I'm trying to portray mm -hmm. and their accomplishments. And so I really uh, owe it to them to do the very best I can and so uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of neat people that I meet uh, artists here uh, mm -hmm. that you know help me and teach me oh tips. yeah when I came Th in you were morning. Yeah. you were talking uh, very uh, yeah. very uh, closely with uh, some of the other artists and the way they're presenting their products and so forth yeah. I see, yeah. they, they've been their doing art. it for over 30 years uh, yeah. this this summer will be four years for me so mm -hmm. I can always learn from somebody who's already walked those paths and so yeah did your father um, I mean I'm sure in the broad spectrum of Hawaiian history, you know, the, the way the families, the ohana, uh, interlace with it, you know, it really is so, so recent. Uh, you know, it's easy for us to relate our families, our ohana, mm -hmm. to, to our Hawaiian history because it's not that, not that old, not yeah. that long ago, you know, when, yeah. when it was uh, almost prehistoric. Mm -hmm. But did, were there any particular stories that, did your father just pretty much open up the library and you just, Walk well, a lot of it, or did he? He, he did concentrated he? first on direct ancestors, the people that that we were related to. The genealogy, uh, yeah. the genealogy, and mm -hmm. uh, you know his his great grandfather, um, or my dad's grandfather, my great grandfather, his story, uh, my my own grandfather. I mean, just tons of neat things, uh, accomplishments mm -hmm. that they that right. they've done in their lives, and right. 
you know, uh, wanting to be like them, uh, mm -hmm. never, um, you know, putting a stain on the family name, uh, sure. have a, a duty and a responsibility to, to carry that on. And, right. and now I'm a father now. Mm -hmm. uh, someday will be a grandfather mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to pass that on to my children that they have a mm -hmm. place in, in society, a responsibility mm -hmm. to continue to uh, keep that uh, good deeds and uh, uh, on, on the family names. Sure, and, sure. And as, as we learn to do that, we, we continue to honor them and um, also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, be a good uh, citizen and, uh, in, in the community. Did you, uh, is, are there any others in the, in the family who um, got into the genealogy or the family history? <laughs> Usually there's one, and yeah. sometimes maybe more, but... My dad's sister, my Auntie Eva, was, was a genealogist. Okay. She yeah. traveled to England and mm -hmm. to get the Parker side, and then back right. to the Azores in, in Portugal to get the Portuguese side. And right, right. And up to uh, uh, Scotland and... Mm -hmm. Very, very intense, and then uh, recently she passed away. My mm -hmm. dad was always into the Hawaiian side. Yes, sure. And so, you yeah. know, and collaborating with them, we put out a book. Between the two, book. you have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah the whole package. Those, yeah, many, many generations. Mm -hmm. But those, that work will never be done. Uh, as oh, you yeah. look at, the, you know, just a pie chart on your genealogy, it starts with you and then you yeah, branch out. Exactly. It's just Sideways. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. tons of. Cons content. Constantly uh, adding information exactly. in addition to the new people who are being exactly. and coming in. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's terrific. I know that uh, uh, this is your second year here yeah. at uh, Celebration of the Arts. Yeah, very fortunate uh, with uh, Clifford Nioli and yeah, his yeah. kindness and bringing yeah. me and my family here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he's looking for people who can represent, uh, you know, the different... Uh, elements of the Hawaiian community uh, focus on the arts, but uh, you know, all is, as far as I'm concerned, all is art in Hawaii, whether yeah. it's a language or the history. You bet. And you know, it's terrific. And that's what I enjoy coming to events like this, meeting so many different uh, artisans and crafters mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. seeing their aloha in their work. Yeah. That, that's the thing, you know, a lot of people, they'll come and they'll see my, my art and I like to do people, I like mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. portraits and mm -hmm. different historical scenes, but um, they're very uh, enamored with the faces. Right. What are you getting in your faces? And I, mm -hmm. I say it just kind of comes from inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, those things that I'm you know, feeling. And as I continue to uh, get better as an artist, mm -hmm. uh, I can make that even more so. Uh, I, have, I have some um, you know, artists that I have looked up to. Uh, right. ancient, I mean, you know, the old masters as, as well as new guys. Right. So to try to find my, my happy medium. Uh, I like his style. I'll use a little bit of that, mm -hmm. but I like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so all these things to to make my own style. It rounds yeah. into your own, yeah, exactly. own personal view. Exactly. Well, let's go inside and take a look okay. at what some of the things that you have on our exhi exhibit in here. Okay, we're inside. Uh, what you can see is the uh, exhibit hall, and as you can see here from a volume of sound, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fun going on and a lot of people uh, learning, hands-on. Uh, Brooke, uh, Brooke's uh, demonstration here of his, uh, of his artistry uh, is very interesting. I see what you mean. The faces are, are the focus, the eyes. They really yeah. communicate with you. The, the particular painting you're, you're, you're currently looking at is uh, um, some of uh, the Big Island's most uh, revered and uh, loved kupuna. And that's, uh -huh. uh, you're looking at the uh, King Iloa uh, of Waipio. And in the background you see uh, Lobby Falls. Uh, today there's only one waterfall. The sugar company cut off the other side. Yeah, but diverted, huh? That's how it may have looked back then. Uh, they lived in the 1400 uh, AD period mm -hmm. and he had a son uh, named Umi who took over uh, mm -hmm. when the dad uh, passed on and mm -hmm. Umi had some uh, supporters or his ahauna consisted of those three gentlemen that, that, uh, right. that you were looking at. Yeah, you can see the, the Different, uh, uh, well, different yeah, aspects. A, yeah, and there's an intensity, you know, intensity, their focus, interesting. Yeah. And then the, uh, is this your rendering of? Uh, yeah, it's uh, based on how it may have looked at uh, when it originally came from England. Uh, Kamehameha mm -hmm. III uh, wanted to uh, legitimize Hawaii as a, as a sovereign, and sure. so he knew a lot of the other uh, countries had coat of arms, and so yeah, yeah. He, sent, he sent two emissaries up to England, to the Port Cullis, mm -hmm. to uh, to do a coat of arms for Hawaii, and right. uh, Kamehameha's uncles were honored uh, in the process. Uh, Kamehameha Mukun Kamanaba, mm -hmm. which served uh, Kamehameha as as his counselors uh, mm -hmm. throughout their lives, mm -hmm. and so they're, they're depicted on the Hawaiian coat of arms. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the portcullis in England 
didn't really know how Hawaiians look like or like right. the helmets and so right. I try to adjust mine up to make it look like it, they're going to the prom. Yeah. Anything that's very correct as far yeah. as uh, yeah, yeah. how the weapons were, how yeah. the, the capes draped on and how yeah. the helmets would have been. Yeah. So different things like that. Yeah, cool. this, is, this is my first painting I just completed. Uh, I was mentioning earlier I'm taking a painting class at Winwood Community College and learning the different laying techniques. I, um, I had that old picture that Chorus did, uh, one of the artists that actually sat and painted Kamehameha mm -hmm. when he was well in his right. golden years. Right. So what I did as an artist, to remove all the uh, wrinkles and try to portray him uh -huh. in his prime. Um, you know, well, he, you know, some of that old artwork that was done by some of the Europeans uh, was almost grotesque. And, uh, yeah. and, and I know that one of the artists who uh, seemed to be most widely uh, distributed actually had, had a mental problem mm. and he was reflecting it in his maybe too much oil painting <laughs> yeah maybe he was smelling <laughs> too much, too much lead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah, yeah. so this is just a heat of this was my uh, type of work i did originally just a pen and uh, pen and ink type of type yeah, of stuff yeah yeah uh, the, uh, Kahuna, he's, he's uh, helping uh, our person oh, yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly and this is a kind of a yeah, this is a, yeah, from the mountain to the sea. This particular piece of artwork was done for the Nature uh, um, Hawaiian uh, Conservation Council back in Honolulu. And uh -huh. This was their new uh, poster they did in 2010. Uh, mm -hmm. Endemic Hawaiian animals and insects, mm -hmm. and uh, like exactly how, how you how you interpret it from the mountain to the sea. Yeah, yeah. Hawaiians are very, very expert in um, being mm -hmm. stewards of the land, uh, knowing that yeah. uh, Akua was the true owner and that Mm -hmm. When when the foreigner came about land ownership, very, very difficult concept to understand. Yeah, How can you yeah. charge somebody to use the sun or it didn't yeah. belong to you? It's, it's still difficult to yeah. understand. Exactly. Oh, so. most, most indigenous people are having that same, are still facing those same exactly. issues internationally. Uh, you know, we have extractive industries, developers mm -hmm. who come in and think because they pay some money down that they own everything that goes, mm -hmm. you know, with that land. And it's just not, it's not true. Uh, and we have to yeah. deal with it. You know? Yeah, exactly. I'd also like to uh, introduce at this time, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this full time if it wasn't for my lovely wife, uh, Gina. Hello, <laughs> Gina. She's my wife and yeah. uh, my daughter, Breezy. She yeah. helps out. We have five Hello. children. And so uh, yeah. after working for over 20 years in the painting industry back in Honolulu, I used to work for uh, ICI Paints, Sinclair Paints as an outside salesman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I walked away from that job about mm -hmm. five years ago and yeah. I'm doing this full time. So big, that's a big, big step. Big yeah, leap of big faith. Step. These are all various cards. And yeah, different types of, uh, you know, that people can take in a, mm -hmm. a little bit uh, with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a, well, it, it turned out to be a controversial type of painting recently. And that's the one on the wall back there, I'll, I'll show you. I get about a 50-50 uh, response on that. Reaction a, to it? Yeah, this is Heba Heba. He was the Kahuna Nui at the time um, at Kamehameha's death. And uh, he later converted to Christianity, as did uh, Kaho Manu. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, after the, they stopped the couple eye, yeah. uh, a lot of the idols or uh, mm -hmm. temples were destroyed. And right, this right. is a painting depicting that. Uh, it's uh, Heiau, located, uh, located in South, uh, South Kona, in Keoho. It's called Keiku. It's by that astrological Heiau, or the outrigger Keoho. Yeah, yeah, yeah is now, will be, I heard Kamehameha, um, the, the hotel has since shut down and they're going to knock it down. Yeah. But this shows uh, the men going in and, and chopping down the idols mm -hmm. and, and, and burning it. So I know the um, the other temple that was up above Kailua Kona, uh -huh. uh, where they had, I think, at one time 13 of the mm -hmm. images up there. I saw one of them, uh, Kupai Moku, uh -huh. and uh, the uh, in Massachusetts, yes, at the museum Peabody. there, Peabody Essex, you bet. and they had a great presentation of it. But it, it's currently uh, been put away while they were remodeling. But they're going to have, they're going to represent it. We were very fortunate yeah. in Honolulu recently when the uh, uh, Peabody Museum, along right. with the British Museum, loaned right. their two big cool statues that they right. they brought over. So that's the first time in over 200 years you had yeah. the one that Bishop Museum. Was on has on loan, right. and then the one from England, and then the one from uh, Peabody. Yes. Yeah, that was awesome yeah. to see them. Well, they're the huge, you know, they're yes. huge, and they were on yes. standing on big. Mm -hmm. And they, of course, when they were destroyed, some of them were cut down yeah. so that the images were preserved. Uh -huh. 
and the ship's captain kind of bartered for them. And yes. And well, that's how they got away from here. A lot of a lot of the goodies that was in there, uh, Hale Okiabi, mm -hmm. uh, when Kamehameha II died in England, him mm -hmm. and the uh, Kamamalo got sick, they mm -hmm. died of measles. Right. So on the uh, on his ship, bringing them back to Hawaii, but before he goes back, he's allowed to have carte blanche at the uh, Haleokia so right. he took a lot of idols and different things that was in there, because it was abandoned by that time already. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of those good, goodies yeah. that, that's yeah. how the British Museum got them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And so... And this is your, your banner. Yes. Oh, cool. Did you get a shot of this? This has all the information that... Yeah, uh, you bet. ...you need to communicate up there for you. It's different things. I used to make weapons before, so you see that uh -huh. in my hand I made that, and then yeah. the other a uh, couple of friends helped me. But uh, yeah. and then I trade. That's a um, a real uh, a whale tooth around my necklace. I had a, right. a friend carve it for me, and uh, right. uh, we used uh, some nylon uh, eight braid. So have like you it. have you moved completely out of the uh, the weaponry? Are you yeah, on that phase? There's tons of guys that do that now. There are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. not too many guys do what I do. Yeah. So, no, so only so much time in a day. Yeah. But I do miss the sawdust therapy. I really do. Well, I enjoyed working with wood. It yeah, has I do. A, you know, it's, I it's do. something that I enjoy. To make it 3D, yeah, there's yeah. something in your mind. Yeah, and, and to, uh, I mean, it's not, I know the, the woodwork that I've done with, with some traditional mm -hmm. uh, weapons and so forth, you have to learn to respect the wood. You can't force it. That, and then you even know? the different smells of the wood, you get used exactly. to. Yeah. Yeah, come but on you're in. right, there's a, there are a lot of good, uh, a lot of good artisans in the weaponry. Yeah, and so, so I, 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 right now in my life, uh, I concentrate on try to become a better um, artist and yeah. uh, Herb Connie being a, a, a great uh, um, probably I was one of his biggest fans and we were able to meet him when we yeah. went to uh, Kona before he died and mm -hmm. stayed with him for yeah. about three hours at his studio and yeah. you know he's passed on to his ancestors now and uh, just thankful that uh, there'll be a, there'll never be another Herb Connie but uh, I really enjoy those things that he used to paint and so I continue to Carry well, the torch, the, so the, to speak. Yeah, the thing about these kind of paintings is uh -huh. they, they are much broader in communicating. You know, yes. if you're dealing exactly. with weaponry, it's, exactly. it's a kind of an in inanimate object. But and then that's really not for everybody. Yeah. For the guys with the man caves, they love all that kind of stuff. Sure, but yeah. for, for the ladies, it's, you know, the violence and stuff, they, they yeah. really don't like it. Yeah. What is this one on the other side over here? This is a, this is a depiction of uh, Kamehameha and, and his uncles at the colony of Pu'u's Furno. Uh, just, just a side note, we were very uh, honored recently, mm -hmm. uh, the um, Senator Daniel Akaka, as, as we know, he retired at the beginning of this year. Right. Uh, they ordered a four foot by six foot uh, G-clay made of this, and it's now hanging in the United States Senate Indian Affairs hearing room up in Washington, D.C. on permanent law. It mm -hmm. accompanies all the other portraits and paintings of the other American Indian chiefs and heroes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, until that time, recently, there was no Hawaiians represented in that room, except for the big Kamehameha statue, statue yeah. that they have a statutory uh, right. uh, hall up there. Hall, yeah. But this is a depiction of Kamehameha and his and his aha ula, or his inner circle. Right. Aha, it means cord. Right. Ula is the color red. Right. It's also kind of on the, on the blood ties that kept these guys together. Yeah. Um, just like any great CEO, you don't have to know everything. You surround yourself with experts, and so that's yeah. what Kamehameha did. Yeah. These yeah. guys were his top generals and his top uh, uh, religious advisors. Right. A lot of times, as you see in the history, when uh, Lee Inui was obedient and listened to his kahuna, mm -hmm. he was successful. A lot of times when they didn't listen, yeah. these guys had special gifts. This is a great kahuna nui. His name was Holo Ai. Mm -hmm. He lived a long time. He was Alapais kahuna nui. Mm -hmm. A great a Big Island Chief Alapai. When Alapai dies, he becomes Kalani Opu's Kahuna Nui. Right. He's still alive when Kamehameha mm -hmm. takes over. Mm -hmm. He dies after that, and his grandson Heba Heba takes over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is depicts that all at the Hale o Kiave yeah. in uh, in Kona. Yeah. They don't look too happy because of the fact that uh, Kalani Opu died. His uh, designated uh, heir, his son Kivalo given opportunity to distribute the lands, forgot about a lot of his high-ranking uncles. Right. And uh, yeah. right after this, there's that battle at Moko Ohai, and yeah. Kivala always sent to meet his ancestors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his uh, reign as king is short-lived, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of interesting history and a lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of things for even the Hawaiians uh, to, to study and learn. And, and I think the key is linking themselves into exactly. the history of it. You know? And that's the thing. In, in, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Clifford called and he said that they were having the, you know, um, the celebration of the arts again this year. Right. 
they enjoyed my presentation last year and yeah. he'd like me to speak again this year and I said what's the what's the theme of the, right. the celebration this year e ulu, e ulu mao, continue yeah. to grow right. continue to go forward and yeah. I said what would you like to speak on bro and I thought about it and I said I think I'd like to speak on forgiveness mm -hmm. because I said as a person you really can't progress and go forward if yeah. you don't know how to forgive yeah. you make life really difficult mm -hmm. carrying on your back that burden of of remorse hate yeah. I said, you really need to cut that loose. And so I right. said, I, I have neat stories. Mm -hmm. And I'll concentrate on Maui, Ali, since we're in Maui. Right. But some that knew how to forgive and some that did not know how yeah. to forgive. Yeah. And including Kamehameha himself mm -hmm. and a couple of experiences that happened to him. I, uh, I add my art to the presentation and then I'll share some personal experiences that happened to me mm -hmm. that tie it all in, lessons I learned from my ancestors yeah. and how I applied it today in my own life. Yeah, cool. And that's what I'll be talking today at, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. You know, those... Uh, that the inability to forgive or carrying the grudges went on for generations. Yeah. And I think even now, you know, when they had the, the first big gathering, I mean, it was kind of a, the original, one of the beginning movements towards yeah, bringing tried. together the families. And the, a lot of my cousins uh, in Kalu refused to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that they, they even offered Hokulea to come pick them up. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. They yeah. still, it's still sore for them and what happened to Kalu. Yeah. They yeah. did believe in Kalu chief. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's but, where our line comes from. So yeah. We, yeah. we can relate to that. But, you know, if you look at it in a big historical context, uh, we all have to get beyond that stuff exactly. and come together. Yeah. And I see that happening more and more in yeah. Hawaii, yeah. Uh, that we're more unifying as a people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to have a, yeah. a lot to do with how we succeed in a future where all of the current dominant societies start starting to yes. you know, we, we survive beyond that, which is very cool. Well, I appreciate your uh, taking the time to be with well, us. We're going to try to catch uh, some okay. of your presentation this afternoon. All right. Well, thank and, you for uh, the, the opportunity. Yeah, continued, so to speak uh, and share. continued good luck. Thank you. With your uh, artistry and, uh, you know, the involvement of the family and so forth. And, uh, and good luck with your continued studies because I know you're still yeah. studying in every aspect. Always, always trying to learn, always trying to do better. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Well, that'll wind us up for now. Say mahalo nui yeah. again. Yeah. Good to mahalo. see you. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you. Uh, mahalo. mahalo to all of you out there. Uh, this is once again Kai Ohua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation. Voice of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future coming to you from the 21st anniversary of uh, Celebration of the Arts here in uh, the Ritz-Carlton, Maui. Uh, hui ho. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.